Hi, it's Chris. And in this video, we'll be looking at a command for FreeBSD, which even though it's too small, it's extremely powerful, and it's perhaps one of the most important commands in FreeBSD. And no, we're not talking about shutdown. Right. Normally when I'm using an administrated tool in FreeBSD, I will use do as, which will give you temporary uh, admin privileges, say uh, pkj update with do as, or you can use sudo, so like sudo pkj update. But for this video, uh, because I'm using a lot of commands, I'm just going to go straight into uh, su and leave it in root. So I wouldn't recommend you use this method on a day-to-day -day basis, but for this video, I'm going to use it. So the first use of pkg is going to be pkg update, which will update the package repository to get the latest uh, list of packages. There is none in this uh, particular instance, but you can force to download a new one if you want uh, using pkg update hyphen f, f to force, and it will pull down the latest uh, database and the 34,218 packages. The second pkg command we can use is upgrade. So pkg upgrade. You can, if you want, you upgrade a particular package if it's listed that needs to be upgraded. So like pkg upgrade silfeed. You're going to be seeing a lot of silfeed. You can force the upgrade for uh, with hyphen f. And in this case, we don't got any updates, so I'm not going to uh, upgrade it. So next, we're going to issue a pkg audit hyphen f capital F, and that will bring in a list of installed packages which might have vulnerabilities. You might want to, you know, reconsider uh, having them in your system or upgrading them to the latest ones or deinstalling them. But it lists the ones which might have some vulnerabilities. There's a lot of ones in multimedia. Uh, CPU microcode has got one. That's unusual. Uh, yeah, so, so Avi Demux, uh, which is uh, FFmpeg dependent, that's got some, and there's quite a few in that one. So yeah, it's always useful to know, just in case. It might not be practicable for you to uh, uninstall them, but, you know, it's better, better warned than uh, living in ignorance, I think. Next, we've got PKG Info, and that's to look at a particular package. And you can pipe it into grep, if you want to pull information about just one package in particular and one particular part of the information. So PKG info pipe grep sylfeed will search out sylfeed as a package and give you a quick description, which is a lightweight, featureful and fast, you can't see on the screen, GK, GTK based email client. You can issue PKG info again, but this time if you just specify, say like sylfeed, rather than pipe it, it will pull down a lot of information about the PKG or the package, uh, which is sylphate. Gives your name, version number, when it was compiled, when it was installed, licensing, which is, uh, it might be something for you to be interested in, email the maintainer, and all host of, uh, at the time, compiled options, switches. And shared libs, if you want to know that. A whole host of information, it's quite a lot. You can issue PKG show sulfide, and it will basically give you the same information. There's a few different word, different parts of information it should. Like at the bottom, it says locked, so whether or not the package is locked, which we'll get to later. Uh, it's basically the same information. So PKG info the package or PKG show. Next, if we have a look at PKG lock, and you can lock. If you don't want a, if you don't want a program to be upgraded, uh, you want it to be ignored during the upgrade process. You can lock it, like we've just done there, with Silphid, and it will change it. So it might be something that perhaps you don't want to be deleted or something not not to be altered. You can lock another one, say uh, Firefox. So if you've got a version of Firefox which works perfectly and you're scared of upgrading, which I understand, you can get a list of locked packages. So we've got two there, and just to show you, if we unlock Firefox it will do it will obviously reverse it so a list of locked packages only returns sylphid and that means that once you if you upgrade some packages they will be included in the next upgrade 
Yeah, kind of useful if you have something that you don't want to be altered or changed or uh, just otherwise ruined, really. I think we've all been there once or twice. So next, if you can have a look at stats for PKG, and it will show you that uh, I've got 2,782, taking up 49 gigabytes, and it shows you uh, how many you can choose from and how much does that take up. So 127 gigabytes in total packages for FreeBSD of 34,218 packages. PKG Clean. Now, this is an interesting uh, thing. It might be useful for some people who are running out of space. <clears throat> Every time you download and install a package, FreeBSD will keep it in a little cache in case you need to quickly install it again. But it can take up space, and if you don't need to install them again, then you can uh, get rid of them. As in most cases, if you issue a PKG command, you usually get a little thing at the bottom that says, you know, yes or no. If you want to skip that, so we'll just press no on there. If you issue the command again with hyphen Y, it will automatically assume yes and just do it without asking. You perhaps want to uh, always have that yes or no, just in case you change your mind. Another useful uh, tool from PKG Another useful aspect of the PKG command is that you can see where a uh, an installed binary package has come from. So if you just list the contents of user USR local bin, this is where all your, your programs reside. Uh, that's been installed by the user rather than the install from the, from the base. And let's pick XV, which is a, a nifty little uh, motif-based uh, image viewer. So if you do PKG... And, you, and you're not sure how it got installed or what you, you did to install it. If you want PKG, which, and then USR local bin, and then type in the name of the program, it says XV was installed by package XV-5.0.0 underscore one. Right, so the next one we can look at is PKG remove sulfid. Let's say the remove command will uninstall your software. You can also use delete as well. Uh, it depends on what, you, uh, what your preferences are. They'll do the same thing. So we've just removed Silfeed. And obviously, if you want to install Silfeed, use PKG install. It's kind of... The thing about the PKG command, it, 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 it tends to be self-explanatory in many cases. It's just remembering all the different uh, options, really. That's the thing. So we've reinstalled Silfeed. And we can pick up some information uh, about the dependencies that Silfeed require. And it shows you all the other packages which, when we initially uh, installed Silfeed from scratch, that's what it pulled in as well. So there are all the other components it needs. And you can get the size of Silfeed. It's a 7.19 megabyte package. And if you want to know all the other packages that's been installed on this system, pkg-a will list all the installed packages. Which is uh, it's kind of useful to know. Right. Next, we have pkg version hyphen v capital l equals and it will show all the packages that perhaps need to be upgraded or don't not um, that don't match what's in ports so if your ports tree is being updated recently and your pkg uh, database hasn't it will show you the packages which perhaps are outdated, not, not in package terms, but in ports terms. So it, if you've got the latest uh, Firefox in ports, but not in package or installed in package, it will tell you. But as is often the case, it's not a good idea to mix your ports and packages anywhere. If you've got any packages installed, which perhaps don't, uh, or dependencies rather, that don't seem to be tied to anything else or uh, you're no longer needed, PKG Auto Remove can automatically, obviously, remove but it will perhaps uninstall a lot of other stuff you might need. So that's uh, maybe not uh, an option to be used lightly. As you can see here, if I do auto remove, it says all oh, packages to be removed, 454, and some of them are very important, like uh, XORG, etc. So uh, we're not going to do that. 
another useful tool, uh, well, part of PKG, is PKG Query. Now, there are a few switches for this command, and we'll show you how you can use that. So, PKG Query, put a little filter in between two apostrophes. So, it's uh, percentage N... Do you know? I don't. Is it a percentage? It's probably called something else, but I'll call it percent. Percent n hyphen percent v uh, space then percent capital R. And that, and we'll uh, uh, we'll pipe that into um, sort, and that will sort the list of installed packages from the repository which for whence they came. Uh, most are from the FreeBSD PKG repository, of course. The few unknown uh, repositories are ones that I've installed via ports uh, because I wanted to change some of the default switches that were in the packages. So that's one way to find out where most of your installed programs come from. Another command we can use is pkg delete. Again, like I say, it's uh, an alternative to remove, which they're basically both the same. I don't know why they're both in there. Maybe one's older than the other. Maybe one's uh, meant to replace the other. I don't know. But I always tend to use uh, remove. So when we install a package, normally, from the start to finish, we'll issue a pkg install and then the name of the, the software you want. But another way we could do it is pkg fetch. Well, that will put a that will download a package, in this case, Silphid. That will download it, put it in a, a, a little cache, and which then you can install later. Because if you in, if it's not there and you just issue the install and it's not on your system, it's not in the cache, it'll download it, then extract it, then install it. If it's in the cache by using the fetch command, it will download it, store it, and then do it there for you later on. And you can do the same with any dependencies if you use iPhone D. It will bring everything it needs with it. So we'll list the package cache. And as you can see, there's there's quite a few things there. So if we pkg clean, uh, nothing to do in this case. So we need to put clean iPhone A for clean everything. So we're going to clean up two gigabytes. That's fine. And we'll list the cache again. And there's nothing there. So if we pkg fetch sulfide it will just download it and we'll put it in the cache so it's downloading and there it's in the cache to be used later if we need to use it if we need to install it if we now do the same for the dependencies it will download the rest you might already have these on your system installed but it's just showing you that it will download the dependencies for this particular program if you want it. So we're just going to clean the cache again. So I want to show you something else related to this. So if we pkg delete sulfide for now. And then we uh, list the cache just to make sure it's empty. Yeah, there's nothing there. And we'll fetch Sylphid, downloading, and once it's done, we install. And all it's doing is searching the cache, unless there's an update, of course, but it's just searching the cache and installing. It says new package to be installed, Sylphid number so that's all it's doing it and it's, it's so it's it's fetching a dependency but it's reinstalling that dependency but it's just extracting installing sulfide so we'll delete sulfide again it'll be getting sick of this and i'll install sulfide without fetching it first and look at the steps so it's going to download it and then it'll install it so it's fetching and then installing, whereas before it was just installing because we previously fetched it. It doesn't make much difference in time, but if you have this cache available, it can save some time if you need to download and install 
a few, you know, quite a large block of programs. If it's always in your cache, it's just reinstalling them. If you wipe the cache out and it's not stored, you have to download them all first, then you install. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. But the cache can take up a lot of space, so you might, it's up to you. So yeah, that was PKG. A uh, very interesting and powerful little tool. I only just more or less touch the surface of it, really, just scratch the surface. Um, I use it on a basic level, you know, to install and uninstall. And maybe to search. There's a ton of things which I haven't used. You know, maybe you use them, and if you do, or you obviously, you know, there's probably likely you, you do it in a way which I haven't covered in this video. I'd be interested to know if you leave a comment in the section down below. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you like more than one video, please consider subscribing. That's always a good idea. And if you do subscribe, then please hit that notification bell because it lets you know when a new video is released so you don't miss it. And it really helps the channel out. You know, algorithms and all that lot of people engage and subscribe. You know, the usual YouTube things. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time. And before I begin this video, I don't usually take my glasses off. Uh, if I sound, to me, it sounds fine. If I sound a little bit um, funny, more than usual, is because I have uh, been diagnosed with something called Bell's Palsy, which is a temporary, I, I can't say, see, see, temporary paralysis of the face. And it's this side. And. What it means is uh, the recovery rate is usually about what, a few weeks to uh, a few months. We'll see how it goes. And it's it's not a stroke, but it's like an, the, the facial nerve. You've got one on each side, and it branches off into different areas of your face. It's become compressed. Uh, something's inflamed around it, and it, it's stopping the normal nerve functions. And so your face becomes paralyzed on one side and it's different from a stroke because a stroke whereas it doesn't really affect your eyebrows or your forehead uh it's just mainly down bottom half of your face you know you get this classic symptoms of droopy mouth or droopy eye uh bell's palsy it affects your entire face so for me and if i can get closer to the camera uh watch my ugly mug if i try so this is my affected side and this is my unaffected side. So I can, it's already, there's a, there's a difference in height in, you can't hear what I'm saying. Can, there's already a difference in uh, height between eyebrows. So if I raise my eyebrows both together, one goes up, one more or less stays there. If I try and smile, that's more pronounced than that side. If I try and uh, blink, so if not try, try and wink, I'll wink on this side, which is the good side, like that. If I try and wink on this side, which is the effective side, I'm more like Popeye, you're like, yeah, 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 can't do it. So it's a, a temporary paralysis. <laughs> yeah. So I've got a ton load of medicines, which is uh, always interesting. Lots of uh, steroids, which I take over a 10 day period which uh, probably have some adverse effects on me, I don't know. So if I start looking different, uh, you know, increase hair or um, I don't know, whatever, I'll uh, you understand why. So, yeah, that's fun. So I just wanted to let you know, uh, it's not, it's, well, I mean, it's serious for me, but it's not life-threatening. I will get over it. Just that if either you don't see me in any videos or you, I sound a little bit unusual, like I develop a lisp or something like that, then, um, yeah, you know why. Anyway. On with the video, you've had enough of me.